welcome back fishaholics we had a great thanksgiving uh, yesterday was actually black friday today's saturday and uh, i'm gonna try and upload this video the same day and we're not gonna do any fishing in today's vid uh, so you might as well click away if you're looking for some fish in action but uh, a question that's been coming up a lot in my channel is how i rig up the inside of my vehicle for surf fishing so uh, we're gonna give you guys an inside look and uh, also before we get started if you could help by picking up some of the Fishaholic merch, that'd be absolutely amazing. I'll put a little code right here on the screen and you can check out the link down in the description. But uh, yeah, we'll jump right in, give you an inside look. It's uh, nothing crazy, but totally functional. And uh, starting off, we've got this plastic bin right here. So really high tech, right? <laughs> Probably got it from Walmart for like five bucks. And uh, this is like my wet box. So just like what it sounds, I put uh, all my wet gear in here pretty much after I'm done surf fishing. I'll even put my gear in here when it's dry just to have a place for it. And uh, I find this important because I don't want water, sand, and uh, a lot of you know junk from what we track in from surf fishing to just end up all over the vehicle. So that's why I find this to be essential. And um, I do have a trailer hitch on my 2019 Forerunner here, but uh, last year I had uh, that RAV4, if you guys remember, I had that for like a year, and uh, didn't have a trailer hitch, so I had to get a bin and I just haven't went back to this little loader that I had. Like I had a 99 Chevy Blazer and I had a loader with a, like 120 quart cooler on it. And I'll show you that in a second. That was my wet box when I had a trailer hitch. And uh, this is it right here. So, <laughs> kind of beat up. I haven't used this in a while. But uh, yeah, I would put all my wet stuff in here. A lot of spider webs in there now, but uh, yeah, this loader would go right into the trailer hitch and uh, worked out for me. That was awesome because I could put a ton of stuff in there and it would leave a lot more space uh, in the vehicle in case uh, I wanted to crash out or just bring extra stuff. And typically, you know, you see my kayak is now on the, on the grass, but uh, I would always have my kayak on the roof and all my kayak gear in the car throughout the season. So having a dry box in the back of the vehicle just saves a, a ton more space. And I don't know, I just didn't do it this year. Um, you know, I also have a lid for this bin, so if it's really stinky, really wet, then I'll just put the lid on there to kind of contain uh, all the smell and keep the vehicle nice and fresh. But anyway, moving on, got another little bin or box here, and this uh, is just a cardboard box. I cut the top off of it because I like to have something that I can just drop and go or grab and go when surf fishing. So if I have my plug bag and say I was fishing all night and I have all darters and swimmers in the bag, and then I'm gonna be fishing in the morning or fishing throughout the day, and like say I'm on a top water bite in the day, I'll take out those night fishing plugs, drop them in here, grab um, you know some stuff I'm gonna be fishing with in the day, like poppers, or uh, some fi uh, finback shads, fish hog shads, or some diamond jigs, some bucktails, and then boom, we're um, running and we're gonna hit the water and catch some fish. And then uh, another bin here, so <laughs> it's kind of a trend. I like to just put everything in a container so that I know that I have it, I know where it is, and uh, this right here, nothing crazy, just a little plastic bin and has all of my fluorocarbon monofilament in there. So uh, moving on, I like to have everything right in an arm's length, grab and go. And it's the same thing with my fishing rods. Uh, so I have this rock here called the, not rock, rack, called the Rod Up Rod Rack. And uh, it's really sweet. And on my first couple of vehicles, so I had like a Saturn View, which was my like sibling vehicle. And then I had my first own like 2019 or 99 Chevy Blazer. And that those two vehicles, I built my own rack in with uh, two by fours and plywood. And uh, it was sweet, but it like it really wasn't sound. Every single little crack and bump you hit in the road like, sound like you're hitting like a ditch. So um, when I got my uh, 2016 RAV4, uh, I, I decided just to invest in this rack, which is I think about like $150, $200. I'm not really sure, so don't quote me on that. But it's really, really sound, and it's sweet because you can put the rods in there without having to take them apart. They're rigged. They're all ready to go. I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rods in here right now ready to go. I could probably put another three or four comfortably and still have total functionality. And it's sweet because they come with these little rubber bands. So you put the rod right into the little holder and you can wrap the band around it and it's in there nice and snug and they have little suction cup mounts that go right up against the window nice and fit and snug and then there's this bar in the middle that you can use uh, to adjust the length in case you know you want to switch and put it on an narrower vehicle or a wider vehicle so I, I was able to take this rack right out of the RAV4 pop it right into the full runner when I got this vehicle down in Florida and boom was like ready for action. Okay so another thing that I like to have always when I'm surf cast throughout the season is a main plug bag. So we're gonna take a quick look in here to what I, how I rig it up and what we have. 
Okay, so in this big plug bag, pretty much I'm gonna have everything that I believe I need throughout the season, spring, summer, and fall. And uh, all the knowledge that I've gained from surf fishing my whole life, uh, I guess up until now, is kind of come together to put together this box. And I'm not saying for you, if you're a fisherman just getting into surf fishing, that you're gonna need something as in detail as this. But uh, what we'll do is we'll just go over some of the tackle that I have in here and definitely some of the plugs that I would recommend always having in your truck or in your bag. So this first bin here, we've got just a bunch of terminal tackle, so various sizes of TA clips, some single circle hooks, J hooks, and split rings, and as well as just some single treble hooks. And uh, basically, if I buy a plug and want to change out the stock rings or the stock hooks, this is the bin that I'm gonna be going to to definitely rig up that plug and get it ready for some fishing in the surf. And then moving on, we've got a couple bins here that have bucktails in them. So bucktails are hands down one of the most important plugs that you should have in your bag at all times. You can fish with them year round and you're going to catch fish on them. So that's why I have two bins for just bucktails. And this one bin here, I have bucktails going from one to about two, three, four, even five ounces so that's pretty sweet and then this bin here i've got a section off area with bucktails quarter to three quarters of an ounce for when the bait is smaller early in the season when the bait is smaller and then i've also got a little section here for diamond jigs and as well as flukin bucktails and then we've got another bin here with metal lip swimmers which i would say it's great to have at least one or two metal lip swimmers on you throughout the season uh, they're great for imitating large adult menhaden or bunker and uh, stripers just love the action if you can pick up the right one a nice slow wobbling action i find they work really well in the spring and in the fall when the water's a little bit chillier then in this box here i've kind of got like a little good mixture of like some plugs that i would definitely have on me like at night or uh, for when the water's dirty if you guys remember this uh wonder bread long bomber long shot which was a hot ticket last season unfortunately this season uh not so much Gonna always have a couple needle fish on me. And 100% always gonna have a couple darters for fishing at night. These are hands down uh, some of the best baits you can be fishing at night with out in Montauk. Stripers just love them. And uh, some other plugs I've laid out here is a mag darter. Another plug that's uh, grown on me over the last few years, but uh, I'll have mag darters from small to large, and if I'm fishing at night and uh, definitely looking for a bigger bite, then I'll throw something bigger out there looking for that bigger fish. Also, a popper, just like this is a smack it popper, and uh, if you guys remember, we've caught some really big fish on this as well as some smaller fish this season. This is like a medium sized popper, so you're gonna imitate like a medium sized bait fish and uh, it looks injured right on the surface, it's popping along and uh, fish just love that action. Another bait that I'm always gonna have in my truck or my bag is a swim shad. This is the olive over white and silver flake fishaholic finback shad on a one and a half ounce jig head. And uh, you wouldn't have to per se have this shad in the bag, but uh, of course I would love it because I helped design it with J&H Tackle. But um, having a shad for imitating a small menhaden, small bait fish, I would say is essential throughout the season. And then we've got the Rapala X-Rap Subwalker. And now this is a really awesome bait. One of my favorite plugs to carry on me now, and uh, I probably always have at least two or three in the truck. They come in like three or four different sizes. This is the biggest size, so for imitating large medhaid and adult bunker, and I've caught some big fish on this early in the season, middle of the season, late in the season, and it just has a really awesome tantalizing subsurface, like walk the dog action, which uh, just drives fish crazy. And then moving on to the final bin. Uh, this is loaded up with pencil poppers, so, a great plug to always have on you or in your bag is some sort of pencil popper. I've got a bunch of snobby talking poppers in here and as well as this awesome JBR pencil right there. Gorgeous plug. And these are great for imitating a large adult menhaden bunker herring injured on the surface and uh, giant fish just love eating big pencils. So. Those are, I guess, a list of the plugs that I'm always gonna have in my bag or in my truck. 
And like I said, if you're a fisherman just getting into surf fishing, maybe just uh, consider like, you know, one of, you know, each of these plugs and then um, maybe like two or three different sizes of shads and then two or three different sizes of diamond jigs and bucktails. And I think you'll be good on covering everything pretty much on every end of the spectrum. And also what I have in this bag at all times is uh, some backup braided line. This is 40 pound Power Pro. And then also in this bag we've got uh, some, some jig strips. I've got some fat cow jig strips in various different colors and uh, some Uncle Josh pork rind still, my secret little stash. <laughs> That's actually the black color that I very rarely use but uh, typically my favorite uh, colored jig strips for bucktails is probably white red and um, you know green I would say are uh, those, those are like my top three that I'll always have on me all right well anyway I hope you guys enjoyed that's uh, pretty much about it that's the inside look to my surf fashion fishing surf fashion <laughs> surf fishing vehicle um, and it's nothing crazy but totally functional like I said and uh, you know I found two packs of fishaholic shads are here wonder bread and one in chartreuse and uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. So just give it a like, be a subscriber, and comment below. And I'll pick two random winners to send one of these bags out to you. So uh, that's about it. And also, I believe J&H Tackle, it, we're selling a Fishaholic bundle with a Yeti tumbler, which is a pretty cool little combo pack. So I'll put the link down in the description for that if you guys want to check it out. And again, if you could help support the channel by picking up the merch. And uh, yeah, I guess moving forward for the channel, the surf fishing season for me, unfortunately in you know the northeast is pretty much over i might do some holdover fishing um or just do some trout fishing freshwater fishing but coming up this month i'm definitely gonna be getting down south for a little bit which is kind of a surprise so you have to stay tuned for uh, that news and then uh for the following year 2020 which is crazy it's uh, gonna be the 2020 um you know, I think I might be going down to Florida again this winter. I went down last winter for like two and a half, three months and absolutely loved it. So I might do the same uh, this year as well. So yeah, that's about it. Like always, never forget, live to fish, fish to live.